not just a poster. You have a 12 foot table, and this is why your posters don't have to have everything on them. Because what you're going to have at the booth is supporting material. You might have uh, things that provide credibility for your research. So you might have somebody come in and go, I don't believe you. Why don't you tell me why you think that? And you say, and you say, okay, well, I have, you know, you open up your binder and you show that to them, or you, you have a piece of information at the booth that is more granular that supports what's happening right here. Um, and then there's the final report, and this is by far, in my opinion, one of the most tricky deliverables for IPO Day. Um, people think that. <laughs> Okay, I put days down, let's throw that final report together. And what I'm having my students do is start it two weeks ahead of time. It's, it's literally one of the largest demonstrations of team management that you could, it's, it's kind of your, it's your way of encapsulating and summarizing all of your information. Don't stitch your sub-teams work together. Make sure that your sub-teams are putting individual reports together in their own executive summaries that there's a couple of people on the team assigned to managing that whole process so that it reads like a report and it doesn't read like it's not cohesive. So anyways, what I was really trying to get across here is this is a system of deliverables that work together. They're not separate pieces. And it'll help you understand you know, the amount of information you need to provide in each scenario and how they work together. So I already made comments about the posters. Um, I would say, yeah, the most successful ones are what I call at-a-glance graphics and, and not a lot of text. Get someone to understand it in a way that is they can digest pretty quickly and then you can expand upon it while they're with you at the booth. Yes? Oh, the video is two minutes. Well, it, it depends on what they're drawn to at the booth. Sometimes the judges are drawn to a prototype sitting in the booth. And sometimes there is, uh, sometimes the posters are being draw. Sometimes the booth itself for people who build the entire booth is the draw. So I, w I couldn't really prescribe um, how much time they could spend on a poster, but it should be useful to somebody to use as a guide to walk someone through the project. I've been a poster to judge, and in general, we don't think we're in the 10 minutes at the booth, so it, it's somewhere in between the, the, the 20 and the 10 minutes is poster, whatever material you need, as well as the business to write up. The work that I've been doing is going to be left to Right. And my, my point is, you know, yeah. also think about being a guest at IPRO Day, let's say you want to go to Judges take 10 minutes because they have a fair test. No, I, I understand, but I'm talking about the being yeah. a guest and you want to see. Guest won't take more than, more than five minutes. Yeah. Unless, he, unless he or she is very uh, I, I, I try to get as many moves as I can, and I pay on that judge. I don't take don't more than five minutes, actually, because I want to see all of them. Jim asked me to raise one point. How many of you have continuing IPROs? In other words, where you're the next one after somebody else has happened. From the judge's perspective, let's say it's fair. We come in there assuming that you guys didn't do anything new. You rehash all the old stuff and uh, represent it. And so your job is to say, this is a continuing IPRO. The previous one delivered a prototype. They identified some problems. They recognized the original purpose was wrong and so forth. We took their documentation and here's what we have done that's new, different, and moves this ball down the field. So it's very clear that this is not just rehashing somebody else's work, but you build upon them just like we do in science and engineering. You're building a standing on the shoulders of giants, and here's what we've done to, to add the value to this particular project. And there are some great ongoing projects, and the more you do that, the more credit the judges are going to give you that, okay, yeah, these guys really did something, that, and not just kind of lazed into the I'd also add that book.
it's important to create a legacy for your project or a perspective on the future. A lot of times you get so immersed in what you're doing in that semester at that time, you kind of forget the long view of what's going to happen with your project next. Stop the document. What did you get done? What did you not get done? So somebody could pick it up and say, we just didn't have time. We didn't have the right computer program. We didn't have the prototyping lab that could build this kind of a thing, whatever it happens to be. So the next team can come along and say, yeah, now we have that machine. We have that capability. We have that. And very, well, they're very strong eyebrows because they've got a strong foundation. And we all know the first time you do one, you found it around for a while, trying to get your, get your direction. And you finally get near the end of the semester, the next guy's going to get a huge advantage. Advantage, and we expect to see a lot more from that side of the third one. I hate to cut this off, and you can continue to ask questions while we're having pizza, but we should wrap things up and thank our speakers. <laughs>